may not have been around during Taki's rebellion. We may not have been around when Samuel Daddy Sharp took a stand in leading the Baptist War in 1831 to 32. Mr. President, we were not around when Paul Bogle and George William Gordon were executed. But we are here today. We will play our part and right many wrongs. And the government did just that by approving a bill which clears certain national heroes and their supporters of criminal charges in the fight against slavery. Today we pay tribute to our national heroes and other courageous men and women who've paved the way for us to live in a free, independent nation. Marcus Garvey has paved the way for us to determine our own destiny in which we validate who we are and what is most important to us. It is he who taught us that the black skin is not a badge of shame but rather a glorious symbol of national greatness. I shall see the black man to see beauty in his own kind and stop bleating his skin and otherwise looking like what he's not. Encouraging us to heed the lessons of history, unleash the power of the pen, and create a new era of scientific greatness. There is no future for people who deny their past. Mind creates, and as much as we desire in nature, we can have to the creation of our own mind. Liberate the minds of men, and ultimately you will liberate the bodies of men. But in your homes and everywhere possible, you must teach the higher development of science to your children. Jamaica's first national hero was born in St. Anne's Bay on August 17, 1887. Over the next half century and three years, he would work, find love twice, raise his progeny, and leave behind a legacy that resulted in him being conferred with the Order of the National Hero in 1969. A lifetime after the UNIA was a fact and the People's Political Party had foreshadowed modern self-governance, Marcus Garvey died in 1940 and finally returned home for lasting rest in 1964. God's dearest blessings, I leave you for a while. One love. On this, how would you feel if Sunday is your regular rest day off from work, but just because Christmas Day falls on that day, your boss unilaterally decides you do not deserve an extra day of rest? Added to that, the previous Christmas you were entitled to three days off during the season, but months before this particular holiday, a law was passed giving only two days. This is the kind of injustice and ill treatment that was meted out to Samuel Sharp. Up to 1830, the enslaved were allowed a three days holiday at Christmas. In February 1831, the House of Assembly passed a law reducing Christmas holidays from three to two, Christmas and Boxing Day only. Since Christmas Day 1831 fell on Sunday, a rest day, Sharp believed that they were entitled to the following Tuesday. A strike ensued. The resistance to work ballooned into what history records as the Christmas Rebellion, the ill-fated event that helped pave the way to freedom. Born about 1780, Sam Sharp was the slave of an English lawyer in Montego Bay, St. James. Sharp was the lay deacon of the Birchall Baptist Church and became a leader in the congregation. Samuel, Sam, Daddy Sharp, saw the injustices of slavery and inspired his fellow brothers and sisters to participate in Jamaica's first strike action. There were no labor laws at that time that spoke to the rights or privileges of slaves. Sharp may be considered a forerunner to the labor movement as he fought for the rights of his fellow workers. For this, Samuel Sharp was hanged on May 23, 1832. But as he said, I would rather die upon yonder gallows than live in slavery. 
1834, the abolition bill was passed by the British Parliament, and in 1838, slavery was abolished. We now join Prime Minister Andrew Holness for his Heroes Day message. Greetings, my Jamaican family. Today on National Heroes Day, we reflect on the National Heritage Week theme for this year, One Love, One Family, One Heritage. It is a fitting theme as we recognize and appreciate the role of the family as the ultimate partnership and the solid foundation on which strong societies are built. Today, we celebrate our heroes, past and present, who helped to create the bonds of love and unity among all Jamaicans, those who have gone beyond self and acted in the interest and well-being of others, often putting their lives on the line and in some cases giving their own lives in order to secure a better life for our Jamaican family. Our heroes of the past, Paul Bogle, Nanny of the Maroons, Sam Sharp and George William Gordon, paid the ultimate price in the struggle for freedom, justice, respect and dignity. Marcus Garvey, Norman Manley, and Sir Alexander Bustamante led the struggle for our independence and nationhood. Through their sacrifice, we are a free people, an independent nation, striving to secure justice, peace, and prosperity for all members of our Jamaican family, and doing our part to advance the welfare of the whole human race. Today, we not only celebrate those who have paved the way but those who continue to do their best for Jamaica land we love in service to their fellow citizens. There are countless heroes from all walks of life and in several sectors of business and industry, the public service, medical services, and others who continue to display acts of heroism daily. Jamaicans are truly extraordinary people, and we see constant reminders of our resilience, selflessness, and fortitude. Today, we celebrate Jamaicans like Selena Reed, Grace Allen, and Kimani Anderson for their courage and heroism in ensuring the safety of children at the Walker's Place of Safety who were trapped by fire. We acknowledge the bravery of Sophia Cameron, Verilyn Dows, and Camille McIntosh, who saved the lives of 22 infants during a fire at the neonatal care unit of the Victoria Jubilee Hospital. We acknowledge Lloyd Nelson and Javon Lewis, who displayed courage in rescuing five adults and a baby who were trapped inside a building after heavy rains in St. James. They are real examples of ordinary Jamaicans who, when confronted with adversity, have acted with extraordinary selflessness and courage to save the lives of others. Likewise, they are Jamaicans whose sworn duty is to put their lives on the line to protect and to serve the Jamaican family. Today, I want to single out the brave members of our security forces, the Jamaica Constabulary Force and the Jamaica Defense Force. Some have lost their lives in the line of duty, and many have had close calls, suffered serious injuries, such as the soldiers carrying out operations in the hills of St. James, or the policemen on duty in half a tree who responded to a robbery and was shot, but was saved by the grace of God that his phone was in his pocket. It should not go unnoticed that despite the challenges and points of disgruntlement over conditions and other terms of service, the security forces have stepped up to the call to rid Jamaica of the criminal element while upholding the law and protecting the rights of all citizens, even the criminals. The security forces should be commended so far for their conduct and responsible use of extraordinary emergency powers. I wish to commend the men and women of the JCF and the JDF for the work they have been doing in general to combat crime and particularly for their work and conduct in the zones of special operations and in areas declared under the states of public emergency. It is unfortunate that for the past several decades, there has been an erosion of public confidence in some elements of our law enforcement institutions. 
In the extreme, some communities have come to perceive our law enforcement personnel as the enemy. This is never a healthy situation and only give succor and cover to criminals to act as if they were protectors of the citizens and dispensers of justice. Now, the government is determined to change this. We want every citizen to see our soldiers and law enforcement officers as their protectors, as the people who have enlisted and sworn to give their lives to the service of the Jamaican family, to keep the Jamaican family safe and secure. We want our security forces to be the heroes of our people, the role models of our children, and the symbols of trustworthiness, reliability, security, and peace. I'm seeing signs that this transformation of the image and public perception of our law enforcement institutions is happening right before our eyes. Once the public trust is restored, the fight against crime will be more effective, as there is no greater tool in crime fighting than citizens who cooperate with the police to share information and give up criminals in their communities. In the same breath, there are citizens who, in spite of the prevailing unhelpful social norms, are working with the security forces and are providing useful information in the fight against crime. You are heroes in my book. I encourage every citizen to use the specially created channels to share what you know with law enforcement. As our forefathers found wise and effective ways of resisting oppression and brutality, which eventually led to our freedom, so it is that today, communities that are held hostage and oppressed by criminals must wisely play their part to resist and expose the criminal oppressors. It is the right thing to do. Peace, prosperity, and progress are our true destiny as a people. However, we will not just arrive at our promised destination without actually taking the steps to get there. And we will not reach our destination if we are all looking at each other, afraid to take the first step. This year's day, let us resolve as ordinary citizens to be brave and take the steps to our destiny of peace, prosperity, and progress. Happy Heroes Day to my Jamaican family. And may God continue to bless us and give us the courage to action our destiny. Born in Stony Gut, St. Thomas in the 1820s, he suffered as a slave. He toiled in the hot sun working and praying for the day he could say, yes, freedom come. And when that day came, the day he was free, the plan of becoming fully independent was his next feat. One he accomplished, small farmer, then landowner to being one of 106 persons on the voters list, he was well on his way. So much so, he became a Baptist deacon in the village, a true Jamaican activist, angered by the injustices and oppression faced by the people in St. Thomas by one Governor Edward Eyre. So, he gathered his people and marched onward they did, left, right, left, right, on October 11, 1865, the day of the Morant Bay Rebellion. Over 500 people died, but not in vain. That special day spurred changes in the social and economic conditions of people not only in St. Thomas, but the entire Jamaica. The right excellent Paul Bogle, the man who lived and died for his people on October 24, 1865. A man of honor, a man of truth, our national hero. Mante, my name is Marcia Douglas. 
Currently, the acting colonel of the Charleston Maroon community, the chief. Welcome to our museum. So the role of Nanny of the Maroon in Freedom for the Maroon is that she um, provide or she make herself into the diligent leader that one would have been looking for, one with spirituality, one with the zeal of, of moving on, and one with the zeal to protect. And so what she did was to ensure that her people had been served the right way in which um, she ensures that they were no longer in slavery. So what she did was to undermine the British on the plantation with the help of her two sisters, Mishibo Kwashi and Santi Rose. And so doing that, they took their people to the mountains where they had advantage over the British. The British had to import dogs or bloodhounds from Cuba to hunt them down. Now later on, when the treaty was signed and Jamaica gained independence, it was really a hard tussle for people to recognize Nanny for who she was. Um, thanks to um, recent Colonel, Colonel Harris of Moortown, who had made that one of his deepest dream and one of his aim, one of the most sustainable things that he was going to work on, so that Nanny could have been today the national heroine of Jamaica. Leader of the Opposition, Dr. Peter Phillips, here as day message is next. This year's celebration of National Heroes Day coincides with the 80th anniversary of the 1938 Labor Rebellion. In that year, two of our national heroes the Right Excellent Norman Washington Manley and the Right Excellent Sir Alexander Bustamante provided the leadership for the Jamaican people, which helped win social and political rights that were denied for a century following emancipation. These included ultimately the right to vote, the right of workers, and all the other rights such as freedom of speech and association, which are today enshrined in our Constitutional Charter of Rights. One of the most important of these rights was the right of workers to organize through their trade unions. This provided the foundation to win many more significant rights and benefits for our workers in subsequent decades. Today, Many of these hard-won rights and benefits are at risk. Both Buster Manti and Norman Manley would have vigorously protested today's widespread practice of calling full-time workers independent contractors, thus depriving them of many of their benefits, such as pension rights, maternity benefits, and sick leave, among others, which were won over the years through the collective bargaining process. So, as we recognize and celebrate the achievements of our national heroes, let us commit ourselves to ensuring that the gains secured for the workers are protected. We also must remember that effective nationhood and nation building must be inclusive of all Jamaicans. Progress and prosperity must include everyone, most importantly our workers. We must remember too the importance of volunteerism in nation building. All across the country, it is the ordinary Jamaican continuing to give service in their neighborhood watch, their youth clubs, their citizens' associations and community centers are helping the indigent and the elderly that keep our nation together. These are the ones who ensure that as best as possible, we don't leave 
any Jamaican behind in our quest for progress. We urgently need a renewal of that spirit of voluntarism that expanded educational opportunities for our people and which provided the foundation for the community building efforts of Jamaica welfare in the 1930s. Ideally, each and every Jamaican should be a part of their own community development process and should be a beneficiary of the progress of the nation. Fortunately, there are thousands of our ordinary Jamaican citizens whose daily contribution to nation building makes them national heroes and heroines in their own right. We would do well to emulate these Jamaicans who continue to give voluntary service every day. National Heroes Day also provides us with the opportunity to honor our heroes of the past by emulating their commitment and their fixity of purpose to build a better Jamaica. So in honoring our national heroes, let us summon up the strength of Daddy Sharp, the bravery of Nanny, the determination of Paul Bogle, the empathy of Bustamante, the vision of Gabi, and the integrity of Norman Manley. Let us all use today to revive our spirits to build a progressive Jamaica that offers opportunity to all our people. May our reflections on this Heroes Day call us to this action. God bless you and God bless Jamaica. Thank you. George William Gordon, now right excellent George William Gordon, national hero, was born in 1815, the son of a Scottish father and an, and an enslaved Jamaican mother. He got a call to make the world a better place. And for that, he was never forgiven. You should know then that conditions in, in Jamaica then were just, were just, it's it just unbelievable. People were suffering, 311,000 persons in 1838, enslaved, received their freedom and were just thrown outside. And what George William Gordon did, he bought lands and he cut up the lands and allowed the poor, the dispossessed to have access to the land. And his colleagues did not like that. He chastised the governor in meetings right at this space that the governor needed to do more for the people. And the governor didn't like it, called him a mischief maker. And this is the space where George William Gordon came to, as it were, give up himself because he heard they were looking for him. And from here, he was taken to St. Thomas, where he was tried and hanged on the 23rd of October, 1865. And he reached the Friday, and they hanged him the Monday morning. But before he was hanged, he asked for permission to write a letter to his dear wife, Lucy. He had married this lady, Shannon, Lucy Shannon. He married her, and he asked that he could write a letter, and they allowed him to write the letter. That would have been Sunday night, night early Monday morning. He wrote the letter to say that he was innocent. And if anything that he did was, that was bad, was to help poor people. In Roxborough, Manchester is a museum dedicated to telling the story of the life and work of the Right Honourable Norman Washington Manley. You will find it nestled on a hillside at the place of his birth. 
Once inside, you will be captivated by intriguing information on his years as a soldier, athlete, scholar, statesman, and advocate. At the museum, you can read about how Norman Manley supported the cause of the workers at the time of the labor troubles in 1938. His advocacy took on a more defined role when he rose to lead the newly formed People's National Party PNP in 1938 and remained as president until his retirement in 1969. Norman Washington Manley became chief minister after the 1955 election and premier in 1958 the same year Jamaica joined the West Indies Federation. A faithful supporter of the Federation, Manley put the issue to the people, holding a referendum in 1961 to decide if the country should remain in the Federation. The answer was no, and Manley arranged for Jamaica's orderly withdrawal. Manley kept himself busy with the things he was very passionate about, leaving behind an extensive legacy, such as his role in obtaining universal adult suffrage in 1944, and developing a new constitution for independent Jamaica. And so, in 1954, he led efforts to secure executive powers for elected representatives. It was also under Norman Manley's leadership that Jamaica achieved full internal self-government in 1959, a precursor to political independence that would come three years later. Manley's dedicated service to Jamaica earned him the Order of National Hero in 1969. Norman Manley died on September 2, 1969. Welcome to Blenheim, birthplace of a hero. Sir Alexander Bustamante was the first Prime Minister of Jamaica. He was born on the 24th of February 1884 and died 6th of August 1977, but still lives on in history. Here at his museum, you can get the rich history of him. So please feel free to come and enjoy. We are open from nine to five weekdays, Monday to Friday. So please come on in and get the rich history. Right? You can call the Jamaica National Heritage Trust if you want some more information. Before God and all mankind, I pledge the love and loyalty of my heart. The wisdom and courage of my mind and the strength and the vigor of my body. In the service of my fellow citizens, I promise to stand up for justice, brotherhood and peace. To work diligently and creatively, to think generously and honestly. and play her part in advancing the welfare of the whole human race. Our Heroes Day edition of Jamaica Magazine has come to an end. We hope you were left inspired to play your part to make Jamaica the island of choice. And it starts with you working in your little corner with other persons working in their little corners of the rock to chart a course for the future. Happy Heroes Day, Jamaica. One love. On behalf of the entire team here at the JIS, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.